Okay, so in this video, we're gonna introduce the notion of a vector in the context of uh, what you would see in like a multivariable calculus class. So uh, here we'll take two definitions of a vector. One will be a particularly important for, like I said, a multivariable calculus class, and another one is something you might see in something like linear algebra. So a vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. So that's something that you would see in like physics or calculus, or you can think of it as an element of something called a vector space. So that's maybe what you would see in a linear algebra or a higher mathematics course. So we're mostly gonna be thinking about it in terms of this first definition, but if you've seen something in linear algebra, you might also wanna think about it a little bit like this second definition. So um, examples of vector spaces and in other words, ex examples of places you would find vectors would be this uh, thing that we call R2, which is the set of all, it looks like ordered pairs, A, B, where A, B are in R, but it's not exactly ordered pairs because we have these angle brackets. So we think about it a little bit differently than just ordered pairs when we put these angle brackets around it. Vectors more have like an action to them, whereas ordered pairs are just uh, static points. And then R3, we can think of it um, in the same way. So we're here we have these angle brackets A, B, C, where A, B, and C are in R. So let's look at some examples. So we could define a vector uh, using words um, in line with this first definition as follows. So let's let V be the vector. Oh yeah, and our notation generally is this uh, letter V with an arrow over it. So let V be uh, the vector with length uh, maybe five pointing northwest. So now we could draw that. So notice we could have maybe uh, an initial point of the vector and northwest would be this direction. And then we could say our scale is built so that this is five units. So this would be a good graphical way of describing the vector V. And then maybe a second example would be as an element of R2. So let's maybe take one, negative three. So that is an element of this um, space R2 that I've described. And we can think of that as a vector in the following way. So notice our x coordinate or our x part of the vector is one and our y part of the vector is negative three. So we could go here to one, negative one, two, three. And notice we could look at where these intersect and that's going to give us the following vector here. Great. So if we were to call this thing u, maybe, then here we could say u was that vector right there. Now let's do one more. So let's do uh, example three, which is maybe in R3. So let's say this is two, three, one. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier to draw, but if we're careful, we can still make a pretty good representation. So let's say this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and this is our z-axis. So I'm going to make our, our tick marks pretty far apart. So here would be um, one unit on the x-axis, there's two units on the x-axis, and then here we have one, two, three units on the y-axis. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw the part of this vector that's in the xy plane. So that's going to be about at this point right here. So that would be uh, the point just two, three. Good. And then what we want is uh, a vector, sorry, a point that's one unit above this. So we can draw that maybe in this way. So we could put a dot right here, and then we can have our arrow going from the origin to this point, and then we could put a dotted line saying that that's going down one unit, and then if we wanted to, we could even sketch right here and say that that is one unit. So that would be maybe an okay graphical representation of this vector 2, 3, 1. So notice it's going out in the x direction 2 units, in the y direction 3 units, and then up 1 unit. 
Okay, good. So um, I'm going to erase the board and then we're going to look at the notion of the length of a vector. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what a vector looks like in two dimensional space and in three dimensional space, we're going to look at the idea of the length of a vector. So uh, we're going to sketch a derivation of the formula that sh we should use for the length and then we'll write it all down carefully in a definition. So let's suppose we have a vector v in R2 which is defined by a, b. So in other words, if we have here the x-axis and the y-axis, and this is the point A along the x-axis, this is the point B along the y-axis, so our vector in this case is given by the following. So that's our vector V. And now what we want to do is measure this length of V, but look, we can complete this into a triangle as follows, where the base of this triangle has a length of an A and the height of this triangle has length B, which tells us that the length of our vector V is equal to, well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem here because as we see, this is a right triangle. So it's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, good. So here we can make a definition uh, given a, b, a vector in R2, um, and let's maybe call it something. So let's call it v. Uh, the length of V uh, is defined as follows, so it has the following notation, so we'll use these double absolute values around the vector V, and it'll be given by the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, good. So, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do this again in three dimensions. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the length of a vector in three dimensions. So let's take, again, we'll call it V, which is A, B, C, and R3. So let's make a picture just like we did before. But now we have a three-dimensional coordinate um, system. So X and Y and Z coordinates. Good. And now here we'll put uh, A along the x-axis. We need to put B along the y-axis. But now notice that is going to give us an intersection from which we can go upstairs. Let's maybe go up here. And let's say this is our vector. And so what's going on is that this is right over that. Okay, so see what we have? We have this thing that's happening down here in the x-axis, and then above that, we have our vector defined. So this is our vector v. Okay, good. So now we want to find the length of that, and we're going to do that in two steps. First, we'll notice that if we complete a vector down here in the xy plane, we have a right triangle given by this vector in the xy plane and this uh, height of this triangle and then our given vector. So let's maybe call this vector in the xy plane u. Great, and notice that u in this case is a, b, zero. Great, and then this height here is given by C because that's the Z coordinate of our vector V. Okay, good. So notice that we have the length of V in this case is going to be equal to, so we have the square root because that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. So it's going to be the square root of the length of U squared plus this height C squared. So we can write the square root of the length of u squared plus c squared. Okay, good, because notice we have this triangle right here. 
But now, by what we did previously, we know what the length of u squared is. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem down here with this triangle uh, with length a, b, and length u. So that's going to give us the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, good. So now what we can see is we can write down a definition for the length of a three vector. In other words, the length of a vector in R3. And so for A, B, C, and R3, maybe let's call that vector V. Uh, its length is so again, we'll use this uh, double absolute value notation, and that will be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, good. So now that we have um, the length of the vector in uh, two dimensions and three dimensions, I bet you can guess what it would be in bigger dimensions, but we won't go over that right now. Uh, this is the end of the video.